lost you. I'm back. It's been a long time. Um, a lot has happened since the last time and I'll try not to bore you with the details because who wants to, most people just like to get into the nitty gritty. Um, we bought a farm and sold our river house after the first flood. We just kind of had enough. And so we sold the river house, bought a farm, and for the past year, we've been living here. We inherited three cows, uh, 13 chickens, and a bunch of barn cats. More barn cats than I care to admit, but they all get fed and they get fed well, which kind of defeats the purpose of them being barn cats because aren't they supposed to catch mice? But I will tell you, I've not seen, we own 100 acres and I'm not seeing a squirrel yet so apparently they keep the squirrels at bay which I like squirrels so I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing so enough about me well it's kind of all about me <laughs> we're gonna get into some finishes that I have managed to get framed and actual finished actually finished um, I can't remember what I've shared and what I haven't. When we moved in, I stopped cross-stitching for a little while. You know, you're just trying to get into the groove of getting all your stuff organized and I didn't get a craft room right away. So my stuff was in boxes and I tried to cross-stitch a little bit on and off, but I got really back into it, I'd say about February. Um, and I participated in Mania for the first, for the second time, because the first time I didn't complete Mania. Uh, this time I started all 31 projects. A lot of people do Mania differently, but I started 31 projects and I finished 22 so far. So that's pretty good. Some of them I started and it's like, they may be in the project bags for a while because I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. You don't really in love with them. So sometimes I feel like Mania is, you start just for the starting just for the process of starting something and then you may find out you're not really as in love with it as you thought but anyway um i'm proud of myself for actually starting all 31 days this time and it's kind of easy when you don't have to teach little children all day and come home and you're tired so i'm blessed in that way um so for far for finishes i finished this one myself This was so fun. It's um, for Auld Lang Syne by Hello from Liz Matthews. And I stitched it. I'm not sure what the count was, um, probably whatever it was called for, but it's on some fabric flare that I got in a wonky box from, I think it was Stitchery Express. But I searched, I don't, I don't know if you've looked for pocket watches lately, <laughs> but I, I searched, I knew I was gonna stitch this for the longest time and I've had it for a couple of years. I'd say, yeah, year and a half, so like that. And I looked at all the antique shops. I looked on eBay. They want a lot for pocket watches nowadays. Uh, I finally found this one at an antique shop and I think I ended up paying like $5 for it. But some of the pocket watches I found, I mean, I didn't want an heirloom. I just wanted something to glue to my project. So this one was about $5, so it was worth it. And I just made a little ribbon out of, or a bow out of all kinds of ribbon on a tutorial I found on YouTube, this kind of bow. And I think it turned out pretty nice. And it was ready for New Year's Eve, which is what my plan was. And I just, uh, this frame came from Walmart. So I think it turned out very nice. I like a lot of Hello from Liz Matthews designs. She has a lot of typography type things. And I'm, I'm excited that this one's finally done. And it looks good, or I think it looks good. The second one I started a long time ago it was a sow when I first started cross stitching again and um, tis the season sow and that's by Blackbird Designs and that was this one and I got it framed at Hobby Lobby and they actually did a really good job of framing. I got three things framed, well I've had things framed from them in the past but I got three this last trip. And all of my designs were centered in the frame because a couple of times they've had to redo them and I hate being that kind of person, but when you pay that kind of money, you won't kind of want your stuff to be framed, centered in the frame. I think, I know it's difficult, I really do. So I understand their um, not being able to quite get it right sometimes, but 
you just have to, I mean, you pay for, that's what parts pay for, is to be able to frame your needlework. So this was a really fun one to stitch and I'm so happy to have it done. And it was really nice to have out for the winter and for the season. The last one I'm gonna share today that I got framed at Hobby Lobby is my, my favorite. This is the Snowy Nine Patch from Annie B's Folk Art. And the fabric came from Hobby Lobby. And it is just, I think, adorable. Uh, it was so fun. There, Every one of the squares, you have to buy each, I don't know if you're familiar, but you have to buy each one separately, each pattern. So it's kind of pricey when you think about it, if you add it all together. But I think it turned out so cute and the fabric just gives it something. And it was, it, I wish there were nine more because this was fun to stitch. And again, Hobby Lobby framed this one and they did a good job. I like it. And it wouldn't be complete if I didn't talk about some save the stitches or stitches in the wild. I, we, on our way to Disney World, we stop at Big Webb's Antique Mart and I couldn't leave this one there. And it, when you see it, you'll see why. It needs to be reframed and it's come a little unstretched in the frame and but I just, I couldn't. I, Charles Wysocki, you just can't, I mean, you just can't leave him sitting. And this was $14. And um, it was not professionally framed, but I'm going to get it professionally framed. I'm going to clean it up a little bit. still in great shape. Um, but I, just this folksy, this is my, this is my thing. I, I love Charles Wysocki puzzles. I still have a whip Charles Wysocki. I have not finished yet, uh, which makes it a whip. Um, but isn't it adorable? And this was in a set of two designs from a booklet. Um, I had to look it up because I didn't know where it came from. So I want to say dimensions booklet, but I could be wrong. So isn't it adorable? I love it. So for what I've been working on, um, a lot. <laughs> I'm trying to finish some things from the mania that I didn't finish that I'm still in love with. Um, I just, I'm almost finished with a Sweetheart's A Twee from Praiseworthy Stitches. It is the cutest little needle book and it comes, it came in a kit in this little heart, this little plastic heart with the beads to make the scissor fob. And isn't that cute? I, um, I felt like a bead artist or something. I've, I've never done put beads together. That, that's funny. Out of all the crafts I've ever done, I have not ever done that. And the directions were very clear and as to how to do everything. But one side says pins and one side says needles. I didn't use the um, ribbon to close uh, that came with it. I just like this black and white. Of course, I have everything I own has to have a little bit of black and white. But the needle is supposed to fit inside this little heart. And it kind of does, but I don't think so. It won't go back in there and close. But I thought it was so cute. Packaged in this little plastic heart with a little, it tells you how to make the little hinge and everything. The only thing I need to do is put the little felt heart inside the booklet that holds the pins and I think I have it, have it cut out. It's just not finished all the way in there. So I thought that was adorable. I've had this for a while and of course I just got around to doing it. And the next thing that I've been working on, let me get my little project bag here, is the Christmas Nutcracker. And this is what it's going to look like, if I can find it. And everybody wants to see the side of my head while I'm trying to get stuff done. This is, it's going to look like this. And of course it came in a kit and I am using the threads that came with the kit. They seem to hold up fine. Usually I don't do that, um, but these are doing well. I'm not sure what kind of thread it is or floss it is but I did change the fabric out. Um, it's 20, 28 count Navy Lugana, and I've got this much done so far. And 
and that's a lot of yellow. I usually don't decorate. These are not my colors for anything, um, <laughs> my house or any, but I really just fell in, I collect nutcrackers, German nutcrackers. Um, so I really just fell in love with the pattern and I tried to find the pattern without the kit that somebody may have stitched and wanted to sell. Um, but no such luck. So I ended up just going online and from Hirschner's and buying the pattern or buying the whole kit. And so far I'm pleased with it. The fabric has, I changed the fabric out of course, but the floss has held up fine. No problems with anything tangling any more than any other floss. So moving on. <laughs> I feel like I'm teaching school. Like moving on to kindergarten. Here we go. Okay, my favorite project bags ever. I have own um, two. I think I shared them before. Um, they're by the Scrappy Thread on Etsy. They're just high quality, lined, every one of them. Um, this one's lined in this, they're both lined in this black ticking fabric. I just love them. They're, they're just, and they just, it just adds something to it. It's just so nice. Okay, moving on. Still working on Christmas Rules by Lizzie Kate. I have Halloween Rules finished. I displayed it this year. I got it, of course, framed at Hobby Lobby. It was not crooked. But working on Christmas Rules, and I've worked on this at a couple of retreats that I've been to recently, along with other things. But I'm on one, two, three, four, fifth one. I'm finished with the fifth one, moving on to the sixth one. So I think it's coming along perfectly. I have a place just perfect for it in my craft room on the other side of those cabinets over there and it, it will hang and it fits great. That's where I hung Halloween rules. I wish there was one you could keep up like all year and trade out, I don't know, my home rules or you've seen those like the rules of our home or in this home we or that would be neat to hang there whenever I don't have a holiday one. I saw somebody has autumn rules. Hmm. Is that, I don't know who makes that one. If you know, tell me in the comment section. I'd love to hear from you because I can't remember. Here's my other project bag. I'm missing one. Now I'm back. <laughs> I need to have all my stuff together. I moved and the craft room door is open. Sorry. Anyway, cabinet door, not craft room door. Working on, also, I worked on this during Mania. And you know what? I just counted these little jingles themselves one at, one at a time. I'm stitching them all together, but I counted this as one start, this is another start, this is another start, because I think you should be able to. <laughs> But anyway, this is as far as I've gotten on Lizzie Kate Jingles. And it's on 32 count amber linen. And I really like it. These are just so fun. It's like you feel a sense of, I feel like you finish, feel a sense of completion when you finish each little one. And I like that. I think stitchers need that too. I mean, everybody needs to feel like a, there's a light at the end of the tunnel. Just don't walk towards it. <laughs> anyway, okay. Moving on, I think, to favorites. And I like to always find new Etsy shops. I like to support small business owners because we're small business owners and we love support too. Um, so, of course, I can't let this go without mentioning the Cross Stitch Journals. And she sells these on Amazon. And I wanna say they're like $10 a piece, but I've bought three so far. One for Mania 2019, which I got halfway through. And then one for just a regular cross stitch journal and then Mania 2022. And so Mania 2022, there's way more pages than 30. I did all 31 days and there's, I mean, I have this many pages left. So I guess people may start more than 31 projects in Mania, but I did 31 and got to here, halfway through the book. But each place has 
each page has a place. Can you see that? Probably not. Let's see. A place for the name, the designer, of course, um, the date you started, the date you finished it and what kind of floss you used, what kind of fabric you used, and of course this is um, America. And I did finish this one. I finished it at the Jacksonville retreat that I went to. A bunch of very nice ladies there. And um, I just like that it has the printed information that you need to look back on because like making floss tube videos, I sometimes forget. I try to keep the labels with the fabric and I sometimes don't know. And I usually put it on Instagram, but having these little books and they don't take up a lot of room on the shelf, so you can just keep them together and keep buying them when you fill them. And I like that you can print out your project pictures. So all through the years, I've just kind of printed out my project pictures and written down when I started and finished and I have all the information there. It's kind of a neat little thing to keep track of. I've also been trying to keep track in my planner of which projects that I work on which nights. So that way you kind of remember to get some cross stitch in because the day gets busy and you don't want to forget to do the things that bring you joy. Okay, this second, it's not a, this, this was not an Etsy shop. This was, she sells on Amazon, but the second shop I want to share that is an Etsy shop is, what is her name of her? Let's look, Wood Wool Stories. And these are seasonal sheep needle minders. And I bought one for Halloween. Look how cute he is. She, he, look at the little punk, pumpkin and the pumpkin's made of clay. It's just attention to detail on these are so amazing. She is phenomenal. And they have, of course, a little magnet on the bottom. So I just, you can use them as shelf sitters if you wanna just put them on your shelf. I put them on my Bisley cabinet because it's metal and they stick to it. And so they're like a little decoration, but this one is the Santa from Wood Wool Stories, and I'll link it below. But isn't that the adorable? And then I have one coming for spring. She has four seasonal sheep, and I have one coming for spring. And then she also, though, she makes chickens. There's something else that she, I don't know if it's pigs or not, but she makes these wooden project or hold your needles and hold your scissors and it's kind of like a little place to keep your stuff as you're stitching and it's made of wood and then she has one of these little guys that come along with it so something's like one's chicken themed and one sheep themed but she sells these by themselves so you have to go check her out it's worth it she does a great job they're so cute cute for your seasonal decor I decorate seasonally shocker um, but anyway, I think they're adorable. Woodbull stories. So cute. And they take a little, I mean, they don't come like tomorrow because I think she's making them as she's going. Um, but they don't take forever to come either. So I'm always happy when I get one coming in. Okay. The third shop is not an Etsy shop. It is on stash unloading cross stitch only on Facebook. And the lady, Exum is her last name, and she'll post on Mondays when she has some for sale. And they call it Millie Molly Mondays. And this is, what's a Millie? Well, this is a Millie. A Millie is a little mouse that holds your scissors. You put your scissors in here. I have scissors over there, but trust me, they fit. The scissors go in here, and look at his, I mean, her attention to detail is amazing too, but it's by Stitch Horse Designs, Stick, Stick Horse Designs, and she sells them on the stash and loading site, and she will tell you how many she has, which one she has, and all of them are different, and it's so cute. Look at that, how she puts the little buttons on the safety pin. This is the one of the ones I bought, and this was one of a kind because it was made from vintage fabric. All this is stitched. Is that adorable? And on the back, just and it just zips up. I keep it in my project planner here, and it sits right here where my scissors are. It sits down in here, and the scissors go in it. So it just fits in my little planner. It'll fit in your project bags. Adorable. The other one I bought, I have a 
about three. I have one coming. This one is, that one, since it was a one of a kind, did not have an ability to monogram. And she, when I, when she says you can monogram, she actually emailed me and told me, or messaged me that she could put my name on it. And I thought she could just monogram, just, it was enough room. There wasn't enough room for my whole name, but I bought this one and she actually put my whole name on this one. I bought this one for Valentine's or Christmas and each one has its own little light. It's just adorable. Like, tell me that's not cute. That is so cute. And it can tap, I mean, it, you can even put it on the, your purse strap, I mean, your bag strap for retreats and you won't lose your scissors. But isn't it cute? And I promise that nobody will steal your scissors though because this is adorable. Look at it. Little face and its little, its little ears kill me. That is so cute. I just love it. So anyway, I almost am hesitant to tell anybody about this because I don't want y'all to go on there and buy them all because they're so cute. I want another one and they go fast. Now these are the Millies. They hold the three inch scissors. She make, she also sells Mollies. She calls them Mollies and they are, hold the eight inch, I think it's six to eight inch scissors, maybe six inch scissors. Eight inch seems like big. But I've never bought that one because I don't carry those kind of scissors with me anywhere. Now, if I was a seamstress or I sewed a lot more than I already do, a lot more than I do, not already do, um, I might buy one of those, but I haven't felt the need to need, need that yet. So these are adorable. Millie's cross stitch stash unloading. Her last name is Exum, but she posts Millie Molly Mondays. She took a little break uh, between Christmas and New Year's, but she came right back on that first Monday and was ready to go again. And I think she sold out. I mean, they sell out quickly. A lot of people are searching for them. I promise I wouldn't play with my hair, but it was driving me crazy. Okay. So what am I looking forward to stitching? I signed up, why well, did sign up? I Instagram, uh, we're gonna do 12 ornaments for the year 2023. So the first thing I think I'm gonna stitch for January are these little flurry, wintry, you think I know better than to try to put that up there with in the envelope. Uh, Bent Creek flurries, winter wonder, winter wonderfuls. Oh, they were cute. So I'll choose one, maybe one of them for January. I don't think I'm going to do both of them, or maybe I'll decide halfway through the year I want to do the other one for another month. But one a month, I can see myself doing a lot of prairie schooler. I love prairie schooler. Who doesn't love prairie schooler? Anyway, cute. That's for the ornament for January. Second thing I'm excited about stitching is finally a farm girl. Claire, is it? She, Claire is Valentine. I have tuxedo cats inside my house. Barn cats are a lot of different colors, but this reminds me of my little, my little babies. And this is so cute. Her designs are so cute. I also bought the other Clara design she has, um, but this is the one I want to stitch quickly before February gets here so I can put it in my dough bowl. Thank you. Next thing I think I'm going to start stitching on is Birds of a Feather. Pray for peace because this is resonating with me right now. And probably with a lot of people, um, we could always use more peace in the world and in our lives. And so um, I just thought I saw this and had to have it. And there is a glare on the screen. Oh, I love all birds of a feather. I think I have a spreadsheet of all of the patterns that I have. And that is one designer that I can honestly say that, and I highlight them when I, when I finish them. So I can honestly say that out of all the patterns I have for Birds of a Feather, I think I've completed all of them, but like two. So probably seven or eight. And I have maybe nine or 10 patterns by Birds of a Feather. And there's some I want that no longer are printed, but this one was cute. And I decided that's gonna be the next Birds of a Feather start. And the last thing I bought was the Prairie Schoolers Prairie Stars. And I can see this being some of my 2023 ornament starts for the month. 
because Prairie School is just something I love. I think I'm, I think that they're quick and that they're cute. They match my what I'm going for around here. Lastly, before I leave out of here, thank you if you've watched this video. Um, I'm going to stitch con and I'm so excited. This will be my first stitch con ever. Um, I was afraid I wasn't going to get in and I'm so glad that I did. I paid, my room is paid, I'm, or my room is reserved and I'm ready to go. So I hope to see some people that I may have met via Instagram or YouTube there. And it seems like it'll be forever, but it's gonna be here in the blink of an eye. And just like 2022 came, went by and before I ever knew it, I stopped. I mean, I hadn't filmed the floss tube in all of 2022. So if you've joined me today, I appreciate you being here and hope to see you next time. Bye-bye.